this is my adjustable three jaw scroll chuck. So what's the advantage of having an adjustable scroll chuck versus a standard scroll chuck? So here's the thing. A standard chuck does not have any way, um, as far as scroll chuck, does not have any way to adjust the run out, right? When you tighten these, there is a spiral gear that these teeth ride in, and they all come together at the same time, right? So whatever runoff you end up with, you just have. Um, now, typically, um, which if you're just going to machine a face and put a hole in it, that's fine because you don't have to flip it over and then, you know, interface with the same part and maintain concentricity. So most of the time, if you want to solve that, you just get a four uh, jaw chuck and then each one of these get tightened individually and you can dial in the run out of the part. But that takes a lot of time, right? So what if you didn't have to? Well, that's where this guy comes in. So, um, on the other side here, uh, there are set screws in here that allow this whole chuck, the run out, to be adjusted the same way a independent chuck is adjusted. So, basically, you loosen up these uh, bolts that hold it down and you adjust these set screws and that allows you to adjust the run out to zero. Now, every time you clamp um, this diameter, the one that you set it at, every time you clamp this diameter, you will get as effectively no run out because where the scroll is engaging these individual jaws is gonna be the exact same part of the scroll. The scroll is the gear inside. So because every time you clamp this same diameter, you're engaging the exact same teeth at the exact same spot, you should have very, very high repeatability. So if you know you're going to make a whole bunch of parts out of this diameter material, um, then you would chuck a piece of it in there, and then you put your indicator on, and then you would adjust the entire chuck using these set screws to eliminate the run out. Then you would tighten these lock screws down, and then you could, you know, machine this side, flip it over, machine the other side without any run out, and it'd be super fast. It would be literally that fast to clamp, unclamp, and uh, end up with effectively zero run out. So that's what I want to do with this old lathe. The problem is, is this lathe here is from the 1940s. And this actually was in uh, World War II, and based on the serial number here, it was probably on a boat uh, in, in a maintenance quarters or something. Um, so it's kind of a cool piece of history, but I still want to make high quality parts on it. So I really, really, really need this to fit on that. The problem is the spindle is two by 10. So two inch diameter, 10 threads per inch, that is a spindle. Um, and they don't make back plates for that, uh, for that size spindle anymore. Um, so I can't buy one. So, so what I'm going to do, I'm going to make my own. And you're probably wondering, well, how am I going to make a, <laughs> a quality part with a low quality chuck? Well, here's the thing. Um, once I chuck this in here, um, I'm not going to loosen it or unclamp it until all of the critical features are finished. So I bored this um right here to the desired diameter and then i'm going to cut the threads in it the 10 threads per inch and then i'm going to machine out a little spot to exactly um two inches so then i'll take this out i'll take this chuck off i will thread this onto the spindle and then i'll turn the other face and the od then after i've done that I'll take this piece of half inch stock and I will cut a hole in the middle and I will weld this piece onto that piece. Then I will turn it and then I'll come back here and I'll put the threaded holes in using the DRO. And then after that, I will have a custom made back plate for this to fit on that. 
So I'm really excited. Now this is a lot of work. Um, I kind of feel like I might be biting off more than I can chew, um, but that's the plan. So stick around guys, and I'm gonna show you the process. Some of this I've already done off camera, um, just because I didn't originally know if I was gonna film this process, but hey, uh, why not? So anyways, I'll try to capture as much footage from this point on and bring you guys along for the ride. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments below. Don't forget to like this video, give me a thumbs up and subscribe, hit the notification bell, and you'll be able to follow along with this project.